Hi, I'm John Dale uh, from MediaLinks, and I want to talk about the work we're doing in the Video Service Forum on TR01, um, JPEG 2000, ultra low latency. The presentation will have uh, sections on an overview of the standard, plus the differences in the, in the recommendation from the original 2013 recommendation. That includes um, higher resolutions, higher frame rates, striping and blocking, which are used for low latency, um, expanded color components, um, uh, subsampling and bit depths, as well as a broader color specification and master, mastering data uh, metadata, um, expanded audio bit depths um, for um, uh, increased audio uh, resolution from the original uh, TR01. The main objective of the work was to accomplish low latency JPEG 2000 coding. Um, a big point of the work was to maintain backwards compatibility with the original TR that we just finished in 2013. Um, the main way of accomplishing that is that the Profile and level in the video descriptor um, is 15 bits. The first bit is set up now as a flag. If that flag is set, then there's enhanced capabilities, and those enhanced capabilities can be low latency or increased resolution or um, uh, different color space. So there's unique flags for those after the first flag is set. Um, we'll move on. This shows a, uh, a diagram of the protocols used in encapsulating JPEG 2000 into MPEG-2TS into IP using 2022-2 as the IP encapsulation um, standard. Also, existing uh, standards for audio and ancillary are used um, just like they are used in um, in TR01 and in other MPEG um, applications. One um, important note is that when we get to blocking, um, you can have multiple uh, PIDs in the MPEG-2 TS, uh, one for each block in a specific picture. This is um, discussion on low latency. The J2K video descriptor um, will signal the number of stripes in the picture. Um, the stripes and the uh, quantity of stripes enable the low latency capability because the process will only process a single stripe and then go on to the next stripe. That process of the stripe is what takes time. In, in the original TR01, we process an entire frame. By processing smaller stripes, we reduce the amount of time. Um, in general, and this is just a general uh, summary, uh, individual implementations may vary. The total encoder to decoder delay uh, or overall latency is three to four frames with TR01 2013 and three to four stripes with the TR01 2018 low latency application. There's some differentiation in terms of implementations on how much processing time is taken, but in general, three to four stripes is what the latency is going to be. Um, in this example, where I'm showing nine stripes, the approximate latency, and it's 120 lines per stripe, would be between six and eight milliseconds for an encode-decode cycle. So that's considerably lower than three to four frames, which would be over 100 milliseconds. Um, so you see that the low latency aspect of this has really been achieved. Um, next slide shows the existing resolution and frame rates that are in the 2013 TR01 um, uh, standard. And this chart might be difficult to read, but we broke the, um, the profiles into SD, HD, 3 gig, and 3D HD, and 3D 3 gig. And these are all 
in the current TR01 2013. On the right side, we see the, um, the minimum and maximum bit rate ranges for the video component of the, um, of the uh, TR01. Next slide shows what we're expanding this to. So in 2018, in that version, we add, and we call it in a short name, UHD4 or UHD8. And these are the formats and frame rates um, uh, included in the new version of the document and the um, bit rates. And I'll point out one um, thing that we did in selecting um, min and max bit rates is that for some of the uh, 4K streams, we differentiated the bit rates on whether or not this was going to be on a 1 gig interface or a 10 gig interface. So on the 1 gig interface, obviously we're capping the rate at the 1 gig, um, uh, at, at 1 gig. On the 10 gig interface, then we allow more than that. Um, TR01 blocking. So blocking is a mechanism used um, specifically with the case of a 4K signal where, um, or 8K signal where we're getting in from the camera or from the source multiple um, images on multiple ports. So the most common example is a uh, four division on a 4K um, signal where we have four 1080p um, components making up the 4K um, signal. So each one of these is a block in the image and the result of the, the uh, TR01 JPEG coding will be that each block will wind up as a separate J2K code stream and a separate PID in the MPEG2 TS. Block one, two, three, four. Um, so that would be in the video frame. There will be a separate PID in MPEG2 TS for each block. Now we also have the ability to stripe um, both full frame images and blocks. So in this example, we're showing uh, a nine striped 1080p image for each block in a 4K image so that we can have a low latency version of blocked 4K. Expanded color components and subsampling. So in the um, TR01 2013 recommendation, we only included 422 um, components and 10-bit bit depth. Um, in the 2018 version, we allow uh, three color components, um, three color components and alpha channel or alpha channel only. And then we allow 422, 4224, 444 and 4444 um, subsampling. Uh, in addition, we allow 10-bit or 12-bit bit depth. It's also a broader um, color um, specification um, so that we can handle high dynamic range. Um, and this, uh, there's a couple of tables in the, uh, in this, in the recommendation that indicate both the top of this chart shows the TR01 2013 um, recommendation and the extended, um, or the uh, flag, uh, not flag, but the value for those. And then if we um, set the extended capability flag to one, then we move to the second chart and then we provide a, um, a transfer characteristics code, a matrix coefficient code, video full range um, flag, and color primaries code. And that's an indication of how that particular material um, was prepared. Next is expanded audio um, bit depth. In the original 2013 version of uh, TR01, uh, we specified um, audio as 20 bits. Um, we got a lot of feedback from the industry that 20 bits was um, was probably not acceptable um, that the industry wanted to use 24 bits. So in, um, in this um, version of the TR, we've expanded from 20 bits to uh, 24. Um, and uh, 
Uh, we allow uh, the same um, number of channel pairs um, as in the original, and that's consistent with what most applications do today on MPEG-2 TS. Um, with all of the capability in the, in the TR and all of the ranges for, um, for values, and this is a big change from uh, the 2013 version, uh, we're concerned that there might not be um, equivalent points chosen for interoperability. And uh, we wanted to put um, some basic interoperability points into the document and then follow up with a group in the VSF after that to amend that list as, the, um, as needs change and as we get more usage of the UHD formats, both 4K and 8K. So this chart might be um, slightly hard to read, but we've captured the most common uh, broadcast video formats, um, SD, HD, 3 gig, uh, for uh, 422 10-bit applications with typical television broadcast color space, and we've included them in the top of the chart. We get down towards the bottom, um, we've added low latency versions of those formats, which we think will be the most um, common or typical applications. So in those applications, you can see that um, we've applied um, uh, low latency striping, and um, you see the, uh, the target latency, which we've shown in this chart. This doesn't mean the exact latency, but the reason that you would stripe that specific um, format um, should result in these lower latency values. This is um, kind of a, uh, uh, a first pass at um, ULL um, uh, applications, just 4K applications. And again, we picked sort of a, uh, a common starting point. So 4K either blocked or non-blocked. Um, and either uh, low latency or non-low latency. And of course, both in 59 and 50 um, frames per second. So it's kind of a short list, but we think these are probably the easiest um, versions to go through and, um, and to look at interoperability. We expect that this list will get added to as um, users get more familiar with 4K and 8K applications and start looking for very specific um, interoperability points. So VSF will be kicking off a group to start additional work on interoperability points. What I showed you there is really just a snapshot of what um, we've chosen um, in the working group that's created the TR. So I wanted to provide just a little bit of uh, indication on where we are in terms of completing the TR. Um, the group, the editing group, is about 98% complete with the document. Um, the document's been reviewed many times. Um, we just had to add some of the interoperability tables to it, and probably one more review session, um, and then we'll be ready to send it out to the um, broader group in the VSF for comments. Um, upon resolving any of those comments, we can get it to the board, of the VSF and we can publish it. So we expect, and this is pretty conservative, we expect to be um, have it published on the VSF website um, by early June, um, perhaps earlier than that. So that concludes my presentation and um, hope that that was uh, informative for you.